Hello, and thank you for joining this OncLive Insights program on expert perspectives in the management of muscle invasive bladder cancer. OncLive Insights is a video educational series that features in depth reports, feature segments, and profiles of leaders in healthcare and in a video interview sty style format utilizing key opinion leaders in cancer care and research. OncLive Insights video editorial series are produced as professional film productions that are featured and archived on www.onclive.com. My name is Dr. Daniel P. Petrolak, and I'm Director of General Urine Oncology Research Program and, and the Co-Director of the Signal Transduction Research Program at the Yale Comprehensive Cancer Center, Yale School of Medicine. I'm joined today by Dr. Dean F. Bajoran, an attending physician at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and Professor of Medicine at Wild Cornell Medical College of Cornell University, and Dr. Evan Y. Yu, Associate Professor for the Department of Medicine, Division of Oncology at the University of Washington, Seattle Cancer Care Alliance. Thank you again for joining us and let's get started on our discussion. So first we'd like to talk about the management of muscle invasive bladder cancer, particularly those patients who are stage two or stage three with urethelial carcinoma. So uh, Dr. Bajoran, what are your approaches to systemic therapy for these patients uh, in this state of disease? Well, Dan, as we all know, uh, muscle invasive disease is not without controversy. Uh, and it's been uh, battered back and forth as to what is the optimal management. And so my approach, or at least my uh, opinion, is that if we take a look at the historical data, about 50% of patients who undergo a cystectomy for muscle invasive disease will recur by five years or so. So my perspective on that is that it's a systemic disease from the outset and a fairly substantial number of patients. And so I am an, an advocate of neoadjuvant chemotherapy, uh, but it's a, an approach that really needs a multidisciplinary team to, to make it happen and do it correctly. So uh, at, at our center, um, our urologists are, are uh, you know, well-versed in, in the data. Uh, if you take a look at the meta-analyses, uh, there's a meta-analysis of about 3,000 patients looking at multiple neoadjuvant cisplatin-based chemotherapy regimens. And the two best are MVAC and, and the CMV studies. The MVAC study is the American study, the SWOG trial, uh, which showed at the end of five years an absolute difference of 14% in five-year survival, which is a, a big number, that, uh, a very good p-value. And if we look at uh, bladder cancer-specific death, it's much improved, highly statistically significant in the patients who got MVAC. The CMV trial is a little bit different. Uh, that trial, uh, patients were randomized to receive three cycles of, M of CMV uh, versus no uh, uh, prior treatment. And then patients were managed according to best practices. They could get radiation, they could get surgery, et cetera. Uh, so it, management was per the treating physician. But if one really looks at it carefully and examines the patients who underwent a cystectomy, um, that hazard ratio for survival is actually very good, it's 0.75. So I think those data plus the meta-analysis uh, for me support the contention that uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy for roughly a 12-week period of time um, should be a, uh, a standard of care. However, it's not well adopted by the community. Exactly. And in fact, if we look at the uh, number of patients, percentage of patients who are actually getting neoadjuvant chemotherapy, uh, it's really suboptimal in my opinion. It's really very low. And there are a number of reasons. Uh, I think one is that uh, not everyone is convinced in terms of the benefit. Uh, there are toxicities associated with cisplatin-based therapy, especially in an older population, uh, and that's difficult to manage at, at times. I think urologists are concerned that patients will get chemotherapy and then they'll never see them again, and they won't uh, you know, receive surgery, uh, which is a critical component. So my approach is almost like germ cell tumors, that we give them chemotherapy and then we immediately look at consolidation surgery. And in this case, it's a cystectomy uh, and a bilateral pelvic lymph node dissection. And as we all know, that quality of that pelvic lymph node dissection is actually critical in terms of long-term uh, survival. So that, that's our, our general approach in terms of uh, uh, the, the concepts of neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Then we get into what kind of chemotherapy do we consider. And so the best data are with MVAC. It's a toxic therapy, unfortunately, along, you know, in terms of uh, myelosuppression, uh, infection, mucositis, et, et cetera. And there are concerns about that, especially for urologists who are going to get the patient back for surgery in 12 weeks. Uh, the approaches that have been used besides MVAC are GC, 
GC is a standard of care. It's comparable in terms of metastatic disease patients. But uh, it's not been well studied in patients in the neoadjuvant setting. We've got very small studies. They look comparable. I think what we've seen is that it's gained traction because the toxicity profile is so much better preoperatively, and I think there's a, there's a preference there. Uh, now, in terms of MVAC, we're actually seeing an escalated, accelerated MVAC schedules. And I think um, there are virtues there. The best studies are uh, Tony Shireri's study that looks at four cycles of MVAC in an accelerated schedule. And then we have Betsy Plimack's schedule, uh, 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 study looking at three cycles. And what we're seeing in those studies are that the PT0 rate or the less than uh, PT2 rate, those patients who are downstaged from muscle invasive disease, do just as well. Uh, as we've seen in the historical studies. The numbers of patients who are getting to the less than PT2 or what we, you know, PT1 or less, are the same percentage. It's 40 to 50% in, in those studies. And it's achieved in a six to eight week period of time with far less toxicity. And I think what we're seeing is because the, the, the drugs are accelerated, we get a higher amount of cisplatin in the, in the preoperative period. With escalated MVAC, we're dropping off those, that methotrexate dose. We get less mucositis. We get less myelosuppression, be, um, not only because of that, but, be, but also because we're giving growth factor support. And patients are ready for surgery in, in a few short weeks for the urologist. So it tends to be a win-win in the, in the sense that the urologists are getting the patients back um, in a very timely fashion to, uh, to, uh, uh, to do definitive surgery for these patients. I think uh, one of the issues is, do we have markers? Um, this is the holy grail. Where, uh, you know, the, our urology colleagues will say to us, you know, I don't want to give chemotherapy if only half of them are going to have a favorable outcome. So can we pick the, the winners from those who are not going to have a robust response to chemotherapy? That's just not available yet. And so we've got studies, for example, Tony Shireri's study looked at ERCC1, an excision you know, uh, pathway repair gene. Uh, and that was done by immunohistochemistry and really didn't uh, pan out at all. What's really interesting now that we have next generation sequencing is ERCC2 actually looks like an important gene in terms of uh, repair for cisplatin induced injury. Um, that study uh, by uh, Ellie Van Allen is, is, it was actually very positive. It was followed up uh, in terms of um, uh, uh, basic science work looking at the, you know, the, the actual role of ERCC2 and it holds up both biologically and in terms of the, uh, the neoadjuvant study looking for response related to mutations within ERCC2. So that needs validation and so there is an ongoing study now in both the neoadjuvant and the metastatic disease settings to see is ERCC2 a reliable biomarker for cisplatin sensitivity. Exactly. Exactly. There's a lot of...